Now we will use Lagrangian mechanics to find the equations of motion for a simple pendulum. So on the left you will see the equation we will be using and on the right we have our image of a simple pendulum where the bob has mass m, the string is length l, and we will be using the angle to describe the motion of the pendulum. In order to make the Lagrangian, we need the kinetic and potential energies. So let's start with the kinetic energy. So this mass is rotating about a fixed point, so we could say it has rotational kinetic energy. And that takes the formula of 1 half i omega squared, where i is the moment of inertia about the point of rotation, and omega is the angular velocity. In a simple pendulum, all the mass is concentrated at one location. So we could say that the moment of inertia is equal to just m l squared. Also, we are describing the motion of this pendulum in terms of the angle, which means that we need to write the angular velocity in terms of the angle. So instead of omega, we could write theta dot. And with that, we have all we need to write our kinetic energy equation. And that will be equal to 1 half m l squared times omega dot squared. Next, we have our potential energy. I like to take my potential energy from the top where the string will meet the ceiling. A lot of people don't like to do that because the potential energy would always be negative, but it makes things a lot easier. The gravitational potential energy is the mass times little g times the distance from whatever we say the zero point is. So in this case, the ceiling. So that will be equal to negative mg l times cosine of theta. We now have everything we need to write the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian will be equal to 1 half m l squared theta dot squared plus mg l cosine of theta. So according to the equation, the first thing we do is take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. So the only theta in the Lagrangian is in the second term, which is filled with constants except for cosine of theta. Taking the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta would get negative mg l sine of theta. Next, we could take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. So the only theta dot is in the first term, and by using the power rule, we can get that this is equal to m l squared theta dot. Then we could take the derivative with respect to time of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot, and we get that. That is equal to m l squared theta double dot. Going back to our original equation, we can equate this to the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. Then we will get that m l squared theta double dot is equal to negative mg l sine of theta. Now there's clearly a few things we can cancel, like the m's and one of the l's. Rewriting this, we get that l theta double dot is equal to negative g sine of theta. This is a differential equation and is typically written as l theta double dot plus g sine of theta is equal to zero. The problem with this differential equation is that it's very difficult to solve. So what we do is we make a small angle approximation so when theta is very small and measured in radians, it will be approximately equal to sine of theta. Making this replacement into our differential equation gets that L theta double dot plus G theta is equal to zero. If you haven't seen my last video on 
the mass spring system, I recommend you do so because this is very similar and the differential equation can be solved in almost the same way. So the first thing that we do is we can assume that theta takes the form of e to the power of lambda t. This means that we can also take the derivative, which means that theta dot is equal to lambda e to the lambda t, and then theta double dot is equal to lambda squared e to the lambda t. We can put this back into our equation and get that L lambda squared e to the lambda t plus g e to the lambda t is equal to zero. Then we could factor out an e to the lambda t and then we are left with L lambda squared plus g. So because e to the lambda t cannot be equal to zero because it's exponential, that means that L lambda squared plus g must equal zero. Firstly, we could solve for lambda squared, and we will get that lambda squared is equal to negative g over L. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that lambda is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative g over L. This is also equal to plus or minus i times the square root of g over L. Like in the mass spring system from last video, we can change the square root of g over L to be equal to omega. In the beginning, we assumed that theta of t is equal to e to the lambda t. We found that lambda is equal to plus or minus i omega. This means that our two solutions for theta of t are e to the i omega t and e to the negative i omega t. From here on out, solving this is exactly the same as it was in the mass spring system. So I will just give the answer. So theta of t is equal to C1 cosine of omega t plus C2 sine of omega t. C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants, which can be solved for if the problem was given initial conditions. It is also important to remember that in this case, omega is equal to the square root of g over l. And that is the equation of motion. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for our next video where we find the equations of motion for an Atwood machine. Thank you. Bye.